Welcome to Cascadia International Women's Film Festival special event, a, neat, a conversation with Cheryl Boone Isaacs. My name is Cheryl Crooks. I am honored to be the executive director of Cascadia. We are only in our second season this year of presenting exceptional films directed by women. It's a great thrill for me to see this place fill. We've sold out several of our films. If you have not yet purchased a ticket <laughs> to one of our movies, do so very soon. We're so thrilled and so honored to have with us Cheryl Boone Isaacs. You are in for a wonderful conversation tonight. She's just terrifically warm. She's done a lot in the industry to help promote women and people of color. Uh, she's only the third woman in the 90-year history of the Academy to be president, and she is the first African-American. We're so honored to have her here tonight. <laughs> Cheryl Boone Isaacs, Deb Slater. Um, 1977, publicist, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but at the time, this was kind of a new, a new genre. Um, and and it, was a, it was a bit challenging, right? Uh, talk about that experience. What was that well, like? Well, I was very, very junior. Uh, I mean, very, <laughs> very junior. Uh, and there were three women, and our job was to work with journalists around the country to come to what was then referred to as the biggest press junket in the history of Hollywood. Wow. So wh it was great. Um, not only did I pinch myself quite often because I was actually driving onto a lot, a studio lot being brand new, so that was amazing. Every once in a while, kinda, I actually would sort of tear up thinking, oh, good God. <laughs> so, um, and, um, and, and didn't speak hardly ever because I was scared to death forever. Um, but it was, it was a very good experience, and I learned um, about journalism, because I really didn't know that much about it, and met journalists who remained friends through most of my career. So it was very helpful. Care to drop any names? Um, well, uh, back in the, in, in, in the days when <laughs> Siskel and Ebert were at different uh, newspapers, had not gotten a television show yet. Wow. And I was actually friendlier with uh, Gene, a little bit more than that. Yeah. Wow. And the interests of... Um, in, in, in junk with junkets, uh, a lot of the attention would be paid to journalists between New York and LA. So that was really great for me too, in the very beginning. And then it, it was good forever. Yeah. Forever. It's yeah. been pretty good yeah. for a while. In 1970, well, back then, who and what influenced you at um, that time? As you heard in the uh, video, my brother Ashley. Mm. Now, and, and I still refer to Ashley as the engine and I'm the caboose. Um, because his strides were quite major. He was the very first uh, executive in Hollywood to be named president of marketing and distribution at a studio. And that was at Fox in the late 70s. And he had been head of marketing at one point and then head of distribution. And then there was this movie that Fox had that um, mm, people were not quite sure, some people, of uh, what they had, uh, and I hear that now, and you'll understand why when I say the name of the movie. Uh, but Ashley did. He talked to us about it all the time, this great movie that he was working on. He was very excited, and in those days, the summer tentpole movies, the big deal was to be in the theaters over the July 4th weekend. And he decided with this movie to push it to Memorial Day, and his boss, Alan Ladd Jr., who we're all still very close. In fact, my husband has done a documentary on Laddie. Um, said, okay, because he trusted him very, very much. And the movie was called Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> and that <laughs> changed the way summer movies yeah. were released. Exactly right. and, that, and your brother came up with that. Yes, he wow. did. And he had he entered the film business in 61, right out of college. He was a bit older, like 30 years. Um, <laughs> older than I was. <laughs> and so when I was a teenager, and you heard that, um, we would, I would go to visit him in New York, and uh, every summer I would spend a week. And he would say, you know, shut up. Sit in the back of the theater, you know, and I'd have my coloring books or books, whatever. And I would just, he goes, people are going to look at movies all day, you just be quiet. This is United Artists. 
in 19, in the mid 60s. Wow. So there was a man and a woman. There was Pink Panther. There was James uh, Bond films. Uh, and I used to see the, this name, and for many of you, you'll know, The Mirish Brothers Presents. If anybody, never mind president of the Academy, had ever said that I would actually get to know and be friends with Walter Mirish, that would have, that, yeah. That was very big. Wow. That was very big. Wow. So you never know. Do you often think what would have happened had your brother not kind of encouraged you to come into the industry? He didn't encourage me. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> he didn't. He, he knew it was a tough business. And at, when I was flying and was laid off back in, in this, uh, well, I, w I could have moved to either Hawaii or um, Houston. Um, I was in San Francisco and um, in the 70s, best place to be then. <laughs> and, um, and I thought, okay, I'm just hanging out. I'm just hanging out. So that's no good. So you know, we, let's get on with it. Yeah. So I thought, what do I want? And I thought, you know, he has such a fun life. And I met so many cool people, all behind the scenes, no one famous. Many of whom, if they are still alive, many of them are not, um, I'm still friends with, and my earlier mentors. And um, I thought, you know what? I'm just going to pack the car up with the cats and the uh, plants and drive down there and knock on doors and eventually got the job. But he and I had a conversation, and I said, you know, I'm going to, I, I really want to try th the film business. Uh, and he said, I'm not going to help you. And now we're very close. Huh. And, and he didn't say it in any kind of mean way. He just said, and I said, that is perfectly fine because I want to see if I can do it on my own. Wow. So what was something else you'll find amusing when I would call around um, trying to get interviews. And every time I had an interview, I would ask for at least two or three names of someone's, can you give me names and call them? That was easier than HR was not involved. <laughs> and um, that was a joke. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> as they kind of get in the way. Try it again. They'll laugh the second uh, yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And... Um, and I, I, and I thought, okay, yeah. uh, that's, that's fine. And a couple of years later, I realized that was the best thing for the two of us. Because I would hear executives saying, you know, on the phone or talking, saying, blah, 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 blah. I got your wife that job, or I got your son, or I got... Uh, and both yeah. of us being, you know, a handful of black people in the industry behind the camera, yeah. didn't need that. So and you were, you were very intentional with that, though. Yeah. What, what do you credit that to? Mm -hmm. I was just blessed to be a born into a great family. Yeah. And that's really the simple thing. Wow. Really wow. Really good family. Very close, very tight, very so strict, very New England work ethic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> work yeah. from 13 years old. All those old. things that you hate while you're growing up, but mm -hmm. the older no, you know, you didn't no, hate no, it? No? no. 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 Oh. Good. No. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Which is probably why you oh, are yeah. who you are. <laughs> and uh, Okay, so you've been in the film industry for just over 40 years. Mm. You have to have some great behind-the-scenes stories. You, you've rubbed elbows with a lot of very famous people, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. any, any stories that, that well, automatically I, come after, to mind? After being elected president, <laughs> my husband, for like the first year or so, I'd come home and I'd walk in the door and get all fancy and say, I made a new friend. <laughs> 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 because I know better. Um, so, which always uh, helped. I learned that one early. You know, they're not your friends. Okay? You know, we'll work together. They're just, yeah. They're people. Colleagues. And most of them, most of them are incredibly smart and very businesslike, and are caring about their career. So this is not the time to be cute. It's the time to be efficient. Yeah. Yeah, so. You're not gonna give us any dirt, are you? Oh, um, no, never, because no. um, you never know. It, yeah. But I, I, I had some fun moments, and sometimes I, I do forget, that when you and I spoke the other day, I forgot that I actually um, met um, uh, Prince, Phillip. Yes. No, not Philip. Um, Camilla. Camilla. You Prince talked Philip. about what? Yes. Charles. Charles. Can you imagine? Okay, silly girl. Okay. Yeah. Um, at St. James um, Palace at their home. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and uh, at the very beginning, there was like uh, three of us from the academy, and the two of them came out and shook hands, and just a few of us. And then standing behind us going second. 
<laughs> was like Jeremy Irons and um, uh -huh. <laughs> and Emma Thompson and um, you know a few folks that are quite lovely and wonderful. Judy Dench, is she to die for? Oh, oh yes, fabulous, fabulous, lovely, lovely. Yes, yes. So that was fun. And you were recently asked to speak at someone's memorial. That was another yeah. amazing thing when I got asked to speak at Prince's memorial service. They called and asked um, could they rent out the, the uh, theater at the academy. Um, and for many years, we never, ever, ever did that. Um, and even now, it's very select, because otherwise you wouldn't have time to show movies. Um, and I said, absolutely, you can use the theater. And uh, they said, we would really be honored if you would actually say something. And I thought, Prince? Um, <laughs> I thought, I said, of course. And they went, oh, that is so lovely. And I thought, Prince, it's not. Right. OK, th that's, that was what was wonderful. Uh, a little Prince. magical moment. You yes. probably and I, had a lot I of those. And I asked later, and yeah. I said, why? And, um, and uh, the person said, because he believes that the reason he became a member of the Academy was because of you. Wow. Because it was part of the A2020 initiative of so many women and, and people of color who were not members. Wow. You know, for whatever reason. Right. So let's talk about the Academy. Mm -hmm. You were elected in July of 2013. Mm -hmm. Take us back to that day. When, when you got home that night, what happened? Well, that, well <laughs> there and, and, and um, you know, I need a tissue. Um, does anyone, Does anyone have, have, have a, a tissue, Sheila? I don't. I'm sorry. Thank you, you so got much. Oh. Thank you. I knew Sheila would have one. <laughs> Please oh, just have it here. Oh. Oh, it's the weather. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. It's not. The weather's beautiful. Um, no, it's not. No, yes, it is. No, it's not. <laughs> yes, You're it kind. is. You get to get You're beautiful kind. green. Oh. It's beautiful. Uh, anyway, so, um, and, and, the, th the thing that's very interesting about the election of officers for the board and for the academy is it actually happens at the scheduled board meeting. So when you walk in, you're not quite sure. And, y and we, don't, we don't campaign. And you're elected from the board, not membership, because that would be insane. Yeah. It would you know, turn into some political horror show. But um, So the people on the board know who's involved, who works, who whatever. Um, I had at that point been on the board 21 years um, and had held every office. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, but I, even that did not, I was not sure at all. Um, and the, that's how the meeting actually begins. You know, they, they, our attorney stands up and goes, okay, we're opening nominations. Okay, and that's how it goes. And, um, and, uh, and then we vote, uh, secret ballot, of course. And when he opened it, and he said, your next president is Cheryl Boone Isaacs. And I, I, I did have an out-of-body experience. I didn't remember f anything for the next, I don't know, half hour or so. I really didn't. And then once we go through all of, all of the officers, then we all shift seats to, oh, no, you know, we're in the front. Isn't it interesting? And then you go on with the meeting. <laughs> you know, it's very interesting. Wow. So you have to be, you know, on your guard. Um, and most people in the room already know what's going on. They've been on the board, you know, so it's okay. So, but I thought, oh my gosh. And John Lasseter, uh, who is head of Pixar, and he was the vice president. He sat next to me. He goes, this is historic. And I thought, yeah, but, and, and yes, I knew, but not to the degree because, you know, why would you? How would you? Anyway, the meeting is over. I, uh, a few of, of the guys uh, asked me out, you know, to go and have a drink afterwards because heaven knows I can't eat or drink before, <laughs> and, um, and then I went home, and, um, and I didn't know if my, I think I called Stanley or texted him, and I didn't know that the Academy had already tweeted it out, okay, <laughs> uh, right after I was elected. They didn't even wait for the rest, they just <laughs> out, and I didn't know that because you're in a meeting for about three hours, sure. three and a half, three hours. And then you're drinking cocktails afterwards, right? And then, yeah, uh, yeah I go yeah. out and, you know, yeah. have a glass of wine, and then I go home because you're drained, right? Yeah. And I go home, and Stanley was very excited, and he's, he's oh, my God, and it's everywhere, and I'm getting calls. And my son, our son, he was in his room playing video games, so <laughs> I, you know, I knock on the door, and I went in, and I said, well, and he goes, yeah, and just <laughs> kept playing. <laughs> playing video games, and I just burst out laughing. I went, thank you. 
Thank you. All right, just keep it down. And then the next morning, what am I doing? I'm out in the yard cleaning up the dog poop. And I'm like, oh, you know, so it's very, you know, because you still have to go on living. Right? Life goes so on. Funny, yeah. yeah. And then you served until last year, 2017. Mm -hmm. So right. how does this work with the terms and mm -hmm. can you still vote and all of okay. that? What goes on with Everyone that? Everyone who is accepted to be a member and you apply to be a member um, and you pay your dues and then you're a member. Then you're a member. Um, and uh, the Academy had now has 17 branches, which pretty much covers every aspect of uh, particularly the, the actual making of a movie. Therefore, you, you know, of course, you have actors, directors, writers, cinematographers, editors, sound, visual effects, animation, short films, costume, makeup, um, production design. Um, there's a, not a branch uh, because they're not represented on the board called Members at Large that is full of the most amazing people. I, 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 we, a few of us started talking about that's kind of like a fertile ground as they move into either having establishing their own branches, because over that time, um, uh, casting has now become an actual branch with a representation on the board, so has visual effects in the time I've been on, uh, as well as hair and makeup and costume. So, uh, you know, the very much of inclusion of the entire process. I come from the PR branch, the marketing group, mm -hmm. and uh, then there's the executives. Even though you're many of us in, in the PR branch are executives, but and the executives, of course, are head of studios, head of production, um, post-production, different things like that. And, and each branch sets the criteria for the recognition of merit. And, w and not just Oscars, but any of the other um, ways that we recognize talent, as well as setting the criteria for membership. So you don't have actors deciding who should come in as an editor. Mm -hmm. You have so the standards. That's why the standards are so high, mm -hmm. um, because we want a certain skill level for the conversation to stay at a certain level, as we represent our medium that we love so well. Sure. So that's how sure. that works. Okay. Okay. And um, if you run for governor, each term is three years. And at this moment, the max that you can, can be on uh, any committee, actually, is nine years. And then you have to step off just to make sure that there's new blood that comes on. Mm -hmm. okay? It doesn't mean everybody stays for the nine years. It doesn't mean that they'll get reelected after a first term. So it does, it does have it, its shifting. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's how... The okay. board is, is, is made up, mm -hmm. which is why we have uh, 51 members. We have 51. And one aspect of, of the A2020 initiative that I initiated um, was uh, there were only two of us of color on the board. And throughout the time I was on the board, there was never more than three. Um, and uh, so, like, <sighs> no. So... Um, <laughs> So uh, yeah. I brought on um, Asian American filmmaker, female, uh, and who had uh, won an Oscar, uh, Jennifer Hugh Nelson. If you all, if any of you in animation, um, brought on Reggie Hudlin, African American, uh, from the director's branch, who I had hired to um, uh, co-produce uh, the Oscar show one year, the year of second year of. Uh, Oscar's so white. <laughs> and, um, you know, I said, I'm not being up here alone. And so, um, <laughs> it's like, mm. and, um, and the very first Latino American, uh, Greg Nava, who uh, you know, is a brilliant writer and director, uh, certainly from my favorite movie of his, of his El Norte. Um, so now, you know, we, we want the conversation to matter. We want it to, you know, have people who, are in it, so to speak. Right. And we got criticized a lot for pushing out older people, which was the intent of some journalists. It didn't matter what I said. Sure. Uh, because in those years, we would bring in new members who were in their 50s, 60s, 70s, and one gentleman was 94. Um, so, but it didn't matter. Yeah. That wasn't as, as sexy and controversial as saying I was throwing out older white men. Right, <laughs> right. Insane. <laughs> in, I mean, it's like, really? Silly. What do you think was your biggest uh, contribution I while you say, were president? I would right. say yeah. the, uh, the, the uh, inclusion yeah. issue. Um, and um, 
think I said to you, I think it was the, I guess it was maybe the first um, uh, Oscar So White, my second year. Um, the, the speech I gave, I heard from top people in Hollywood. Cheryl, we heard you. And I've seen a, a shift. I have seen a shift over the last couple of years. The goal, however, because I've seen this door open before, and so the goal to me is the door doesn't close. So there, you know, and, and you couldn't, I could not have done it without the support of the board, which was always a unanimous decision. Um, and, and we had committees working on different areas in order to move this very quickly because as a minority, I've heard the speech many different times. Mm -hmm. I like the walk. I like the talk, the walk, and I like to see it done. Um, and, and I don't have to be, you know, sort of the leader. I'm, I can be very good at, you know, I'm very female that way. Wouldn't you want to do this, you know, <laughs> and you go do that and somebody else? I think it'd be really great if you do that. Um, and I also felt because <laughs> um, our membership of now 8,000 was a little over seven then, you know, the, these men and women represent the top talent in town pretty much. So therefore, they have the ability to hire, to promote, and to mentor. So therefore, if our conversation stays in this vein, they will go out and notice a difference day in and day out on how they conduct their business and how that can change. You know, not stand up and declare uh, which the, a few uh, press people kept saying, aren't you the voice of diversity in Hollywood? I'm like, no, no. Because first of all, I know that game, mm -hmm. right? You put mm -hmm. somebody up at the top and then you knock them out. I said, yep. no. So, um, you know, so you don't, you know, no, 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 no. And a lot of people working behind the scenes, very much involved in making this change. So that, that to me is a great thing. And different people would come up and say, can I talk to you? And I know right away they wanted to have a, a sensitive conversation that they weren't sure they could ever have anywhere. And I'd go, absolutely. And would tell me that, you know, I never really thought about it. Which makes sense. I get that. You know, no, people aren't sitting around saying, I don't want. Maybe a few, very few. That's not how most people are. Right. So you just need to give everybody to sort of open that peripheral vision of yours and just look around, check it out. And as you said earlier, one of my favorite words is opportunity. Yes. Because many people, many people are talented in many, many different ways. And what they lack quite often for any kind of personal success is opportunity. And we've seen it many, 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 many times and many people in this room. So I say create opportunities. So I think that changes a lot. You must be so, yes, <laughs> absolutely. How, how, how does it make you feel, looking back on your time as president, and the things that you were able to accomplish, the inclusion, the opportunity, those types it's of things? It's very good. But again, it's like, don't sit back in the chair. Keep yeah. it going, right? And, yeah. and the more people you have in the room, the, um, the better the conversations are. And, and they'll spread it. And, uh, and that's what we've seen. Yeah. So it's really good. Yeah. yeah. And it should be everywhere. Not mm -hmm. just in the entertainment business, that's for darn that, sure. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. That's, that part's good. So from an outsider looking in, your career uh, looks magical, right? I, I mean, you've had, had a studio. That, right, <laughs> I mean, you, you worked hard, you, you created uh, opportunity for yourself and others, but there had to have been times along the way, there had to have been challenges, there had to have been times where you just like, I can't do it, it's too hard, I'm a person of color, I'm a woman, what, what did you do to get through those times? Well, my mother had many great sayings, and one of them was, get above it. <laughs> um, I know a lot of you have heard that, right? Um, but she would, you know, you'd come home from school, you know, for whatever reason. Um, I remember I wanted to go to a, a high school in town, um, and I'm from Springfield, Massachusetts, it's my, uh, western side of, and, um, and I wanted to go to classical high school, and the uh, counselor in junior high <coughs> discouraged the kids of color from going to classical. Huh. And I remember crying and <laughs> going home and my parents just looked at me and not even blink, not angry, not anything, going, of course you're going. And that was all, <laughs> you know, it wasn't a discussion, it wasn't march up to the school, it wasn't anything, of course you're going. And, you know, that was, it's like, eh, okay, she'd go, <laughs> no, 
you're going. Yeah. And that was it. And, you know, each time. And there were many. I was passed over for many jobs. Um, and, you know, I, you'd get a little angry. And then I'd start thinking, I might have dodged a bullet there. And then usually I did. <laughs> you know, and I didn't know it at the time. So, <laughs> which I tell my students all the time. I go, you have no idea. And maybe you weren't supposed to get that job. Maybe there was something else that came along that, uh, come along that might be better. You know? Right. Right. Uh, recently, you called this a, a love fest oh. <laughs> that happened on February 27. I'm just going to read this because the organization is called Icon Man, and they were founded to honor and support black men. The and they business. presented yeah. their inaugural Legacy Award to you mm. Mm. just recently on February <laughs> 27. <laughs> yeah. Um, in, in honor of your decades of leadership and history of opening doors for people of color. Talk about this amazing evening. It was really sweet. I had to do a sweet. lot. It was it really, was you know, sweet. Of not, you know, yeah. having the eyelashes cut all down yeah. uh, on my cheeks and, yeah. and, and crying too much, right? So I try to kind of keep it together. And um, who I now call because my brother Ashley, bless his heart, um, died of cancer at 55 uh, 22 years ago. Um, so before all of this, but he forever used to say, she's going to go farther than me. And at the time, I'm like, what are you doing? It's never happening. Um, and so that was interesting. Anyway, so this gentleman, who I think you all might know, who I refer to as like my older brother is Quincy Jones. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and Q, I, you know, they had asked him um, if he would be on the host committee. And he goes, host committee? I'm giving her the award. You know, <laughs> so that was very sweet. And... Um, and there were a few famed, you know, folks there. But what concern, what was mattered to me a lot, were a lot of the men who are behind the scenes mm -hmm. that pretty much all knew each other. A number of them who had only become members of the academy in the last couple of years, and even though they've been in the business for 30, 40 years, you know, feeling that uh, they don't really want us, right. so never joined and um, and and did. So that was great, you know, agents. Uh, uh, entertainment attorneys, um, let's see, uh, um, many just names I know, but you probably wouldn't necessarily sure. know. So that was really, really lovely. And you were probably picking up dog poop the next morning, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. As, oh, as, yeah, as yeah. fur. You know, I, I, love the, I love the fur people, as I call them. <laughs> the fur people who live in my house. <laughs> That's their name. A few quick questions. Mm -hmm. Your favorite movie? I, you know, it's boring, I know, but uh, actually, I, I do a little twist on it now. It's Godfather 2. Oh. <laughs> Why Godfather 2? Yes. Not that I didn't love Godfather, which we all did. I had read the book. I actually have a first edition of the book because um, I read it way before it became a movie. And I remember I was in, living in New York, flying, and um, <laughs> read the book and read that, they, that Hollywood, they were going to make a movie, and I thought, they'll mess it up. I cleaned up my language just now, but, you know. <laughs> that's an, and it was as good as the book. Amazing. Anyway, so I say two because to be able to write such a great script and tying the pre and the post to this great story was an amazing feat, I think. So it's, it's Godfather too. Your favorite movie moment? Um, oh, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, the only thing I can think of, and it's another one of my favorite movies, just to give you 180 degrees, is The Bodyguard. Um, <laughs> I saw it twice. Wow, I did not 30, see that one coming. <laughs> I, no. Twice in 36 hours. Whoa. I love Kevin Costner. I, uh, am, he is, I am his number one fan, and he knows it. He still does know it. Um, when Paramount was going to make Untouchables, and um, and the producer, you know, said who was going to be, and they said um, Kevin Costner, and I went, <laughs> "You mean Kevin Klein? No, Kevin, no, Cheryl, Kevin Costner." Oh my God! <laughs> I thought, oh my God, oh my God, I'm going to be around Kevin Costner. Um, so you still get starstruck? I still do. Yeah, I still, especially as athletes. You know, Be you know why? Because athletes, when they have to perform, they perform. There is no 
take two. There's no editor cleaning it up. There's no great lighting. There's uh. no anything, especially Olympians. Oh, my God. And these young kids, I cry every two years <laughs> because you think, who can do that, you know, with their bodies? And yeah. they're just so determined, and I love determination. Yeah. You know, you just stay focused, get it done, done. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You know, don't take it personally. But I do get starstruck. And but most of them have no idea. So I don't show it. I go in the bathroom and go, <laughs> um, and then come back out. Yes. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to let you have, you know, whatever, the private jet. Well, I think there are a lot of us that are starstruck tonight. Oh, come on. And we are, we are thrilled and honored that you are here. Is the time's up? I think. I think we have to, I, told I, you. I think we, yeah, that I went really fast. really fast. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there's a movie that we are going to, um, yeah, that's going to start, but you guys all have reserved seats, I believe, so um, take your time getting over there. But yeah. like in the next, next 15 minutes or so. <laughs> and you're, you're going to the movie too, oh, right? I am, absolutely. Yeah. And I just saw some of the short, well, all of them today. Yeah. And tomorrow, um, I, uh, yes. Amazing I film, film festival festivals. Here. I love film festivals. Yeah. It's where you find great talent. Wonderful. So leave us with, um, with some sort of inspirational, what, how would you, how would you leave us tonight? Like, like, Looking forward in this industry, what can you tell us to do? How For can we industry? encourage? Well, I would encourage everybody to make sure they constantly and continuously go to a movie theater to watch a movie. Yes. Okay? <laughs> Not that I have anything against any other way, but the, I mean, and I'm, I'm sure many of you are either have been in the, in the entertainment business, film, television, or the amount, of the smart, for, uh, first of all, I am constantly amazed on how um, precise people are with their craft, it, with their skill. It is amazing. Um, and it's funny, a, a girlfriend of mine, of ours, uh, uh, you don't know this, Stanley, sent me a text today asking if we wanted Stanley and I to join her and her um, husband, who is still on the board and has a BAFTA, an Emmy, and an Oscar uh, out of visual effects, who are very close to and said, we're having uh, dinner with Ben Burt tonight. Would you like to come with us? Does anybody know who Ben Burt is? Well, I, I, I love, 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 love Ben Burt. <laughs> okay. Ben Burt is a sound designer. And um, he's designed m many movies, but very close to my heart is the original Star Wars. And, um, and, and I love Chewbacca. He's my favorite character ever and forever. Who wouldn't love an eight-foot Wookiee who can fly a <laughs> spaceship and shoot a gun. Um, <laughs> that yeah. is my Beauty and the Beast. Oh. Okay, uh, that would, oh, when you cuddle up, he's got fur. I mean, I love him, love him. But I always wondered where did that voice come from. So I, so I, you know, when I first met Bert, Ben, I was like, just staring at him. I thought, oh my god. And also the gentleman, another good friend of mine, who was the uh, uh, head of visual effects for the movie. So I was like, how did that opening scene work? And he tell me exactly how. Th and it's just so fascinating now, right? Mm -hmm. But um, I love that about Ben Burt. And one one time I went up to uh, last year up to Lucasfilm and spent an afternoon with him in his fun fun office, um, just reminiscing or listening to him tell me stories about how, what made him go into sound. These are the men and women that I just adore. Mm. You know, that you, I, I'm mesmerized. And usually starts young, and having no idea what kind of career they would ever have, didn't matter. They mm. followed their passion. Mm -hmm. And were very determined. And I have a feeling well. they adore you too. Yeah, we all That's get along yeah. very well. Yes, yeah. yes. You are a breath of fresh air, and um, <laughs> you really bring the authenticity of the industry. Thank you so much for being here Thank in Bellingham. Cheryl Moon Isaacs, everyone. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheryl Moon Isaacs, Deb Slater. <laughs>